bolt in there. We'll push up on a rod end, which will hug this piece. And I'm gonna have this handle here. This handle will be probably like that. So when I grab the handle, pull the handle back like this. It's going to lift this up by pushing this linkage up like that. Yep. Then we're gonna have a steering rack in a tube. Okay. That's gonna go here, like so. We're gonna have this bracket welded there. And that's gonna have a nice machine knob on it, probably from Dylan. And when I pull the knob, it's gonna slide this in and out, like with the cable. And it's gonna actuate the steering rack, which is gonna turn our knuckle left to right. It's gonna turn this tie rod in and out. So we need to put this thread in the end of one of these. Like that, it's gonna go in there. And we're gonna have a steering rack and we got one more piece that's going to be here. This tube's going to rotate. There's going to be a blade on it, and that's going to connect to our sway bar here. So you're going to be able to see everything articulate as if it was on the vehicle. It's going to be interactive. Doing projects like these, you really have to get creative with parts and pieces. So. The first thing I did was grab a smooth adjuster that I could re-thread into the same thread as the inner tie rod. And then of course I have to hop over to the lathe. On the lathe, I bored open the smooth adjuster to accept the what I was going to use as the steering shaft or the steering ram. So I had to bore it open. An end mill was the fastest thing to use. Um, there was boring bars, but it wouldn't get a perfectly square corner like I wanted. So once I finish this, you can see how nicely it fits on the tube. So we're going to TIG weld this up and that's going to thread onto the inner tie rod. And now we have our simulated steering rack. After a quick little polish, tack and weld, we place this back into the jig where I need to now check the length and see where I should position the steering rack so that when the wheel is straight, I have an equal amount of in and out movement. See where the cable lands. Just kind of feel it all out. I know there's some adjustment range on this, so I wasn't too particular, but yeah, we're gonna throw a couple tacks on the ram, hook the cable up. This is a tab that I made. It actually gets pinched between the steering rack and the inner tie rod. And I'm just trying to figure out where to put this cable. We actually ended up changing the original design in the end of this video to be a second lever that pulls the cable rather than what I was going to use, which was just a knob. Tacking this tube on and the rack tube, so that's for our sway bar and our steering rack, making sure it's nice and square. And finishing up the project just before we were done, I didn't really like how the pivot arm was lifting the control arm, so I'm making this little Delrin wheel I just sawzalled a piece off of a Dalrin sheet, threw it in the lathe, pass after pass, chips flying, and making about a two and a quarter inch disc from half inch Dalrin. This is gonna give me a nice slippery spinning surface that's not going to disrupt the paint on the control arm. And my thought was it's gonna run along the bottom of the control arm and kind of act as a cam that lifts the control arm instead of a pivot arm, which actually has to pivot and bolt and articulate. This just kind of rolls along the bottom of the arm and it worked really well uh, once we got it all tested out. I just have a bunch of spacers stacked here to see how it's gonna work while I'm still fitting everything. And yeah, it seemed to work really well when I just did a test fit. I ended up making a little riser on this piece though. Here I was cutting just a piece of scrap plate that we have lying around to make that double shear. As you can see, I added that handle instead of just pulling on that cable. 
and tack this in place then we'll get to simulate that and at this point I was pretty happy with how everything was working I can just see the riser that I put on that wheel underneath and then we're making a sway bar plate um, out of a this was actually a sway bar mount for a 370z kit that I robbed from a bin and here we're off to powder coating so that's the end of my voiceover Okay, so here we have completed the interactive display for the 2013 Ford Excursion. This was for a company that reached out to us looking for a interactive display that they're gonna take to trade shows and stuff like that. Here we have the method of turning. So I have this cable purchased from McMaster Car. It's called a push-pull cable. And this is able to withstand 170 pounds pushing or pulling. As you can see, I'm able to turn the wheel we have a difference in ratio. This was just kind of to mess around with the amount of force it's gonna require. So obviously if I lower the hole, it's gonna require less force, but I'm gonna get less travel. Going up is gonna give me more range, but it's gonna be harder. Once I tightened all the ball joints, I wasn't sure how hard it was going to be. So this seems like a pretty comfortable position to be in. I might actually throw the small scale gauge on this, and then I'm gonna be able to tell how much force it takes to actually move it. And then the second thing would be the travel, um, which is this handle. This assembly weighs 48 pounds. So this spring I sized up to reduce the amount of effort required. And then something that I didn't actually design for, but is a really nice feature is that I have like a kind of a, a park setting where you put the handle all the way down and it kind of holds it at its like max compression. So you can actually articulate the suspension and turning when it's all the way up and then when it's all the way down, which is pretty neat. And then the other thing was we machined up this Delrin wheel that actually runs along the bottom of the control arm. And uh, it creates a really nice ratio where it's hard initially and then it gets quite a bit easier as you get higher. So it gets easier as the spring assistance becomes less and it balances out really nice wasn't part of the thought process, but it worked out really well being the way that it is because it kind of works like a cam, how it's lifting the arm. But basically the key points were to simulate the camber change. You can see that it increases camber as it compresses the sway bar connection point. Obviously this is not a replication of the exact sway bar setup on a Ford, but given the display constraints, this was kind of just like how your sway bar linkage is articulating. Otherwise, it's very user-friendly. If you walk up to this, obviously you're gonna see two handles and you're probably gonna just pull on them. As you're lifting it, you can kind of cycle them all at different heights. You can really see the difference in what's going on. So it's pretty sweet. 
a fun project all together. Yeah, we were happy to do it. Getting into stuff like this and maybe into some like educational displays and stuff for schools is where we're kind of headed for um, a direction in additional products. So we're still maintaining our roots in suspension, but we want to bring the ability for interactive displays and learning to the community. So this is a good gateway. We are happy to do it for the company and uh, thank you guys for watching. Also, today is today's Wednesday, obviously of our Black Week Friday sale. Products from our site, Drift HQ. We don't do sales very often. Yeah, we do do like the sign up sales and sometimes we throw a couple promos here and there, but this is the biggest sale that we have of the year, so don't miss it.